Ugh, finally done with work. Man, I thought today was never going to end. But I'm finally free, and I'm about to start heading home. So, wh what were you thinking of doing for dinner? Well, congrats for making it through yet another day. I'm sure you must be tired. I was thinking of doing a little stir-fry. You like when I cook that, don't you? Of course I do. You make some of the best stir-fry that I've ever had. Now I'm even more excited to get home and eat your delicious cooking. By the way, is Rhea asleep? I would love it if I could see her a bit before we all go to bed. No, I'm sorry, Josh. She's already gone to bed. You know that she's only a toddler, after all. She crashed maybe 30 minutes ago. I just don't think she's old enough to really be staying up until you get home. Right, well, I figured the worst I could do was ask to see if she was up. Besides, I was talking to Frank and he told me about how his kid is always up at this time. So, I just thought there might be a chance that Rhea was still awake. Is Frank one of your co-workers? I think you've told me about him. Isn't his son already in elementary school? I guess that would put him a few years older than Rhea, so that makes sense. Man, is there really that big of a difference between a toddler and a kid who has already started elementary school? And just how did you know that their kid was already in elementary school? Did I tell you about that before as well? No, it's not like that, but Frank's wife and I talk now and then since we both met at the same company event that you invited me to. We don't talk all that often, but we'll get coffee together now and then, but I can't really say that we're close or anything like that. Really, we've just met up a couple of times to talk, and that's it. I see. Wow. Well, I guess I had no idea that that was going on at all. But the way Frank talks about her, it sounds like his wife can be a bit much to handle. Do you think that's true? What's she like? Do you two get along all right? She can be a bit... scary? Maybe intense is just the better word for it. But why do you ask? Do you have any opinion on her? No, nothing like that. It's what I heard from Frank is all. He's always complaining about how she's always trying to make him do more around the house and help out with chores. I'm just glad that we've split up our duties around the house really clearly so that we never run into that issue. I don't really know Frank or his wife Vicky all that well, so I guess I can't speak to them. But there are plenty of times when I do wish that you would do something to help me out with the housework. In fact, I don't really think it's all that bad to ask for help or expect your partner to do something like that, right? Wait, what? You mean there's been times when you've wanted me to help doing stuff around the house? I mean, sure. Isn't that only natural? I don't think that's weird at all. Especially since we had Rhea, I've just felt like there have been times when I've been stretched kind of thin. And that's not even starting to get into taking care of your mom and all of that business, but I guess you should know that there are times when I could really use your help. But I don't get it. I thought we already established the rules of the house, right? I feel like if I helped you, then we would just be blurring those lines and then who knows what would happen. I thought we agreed that you do all the chores around the house and I go to work in her living, right? Besides, isn't that just the best way for a husband and wife to split up their time? We're just splitting the labor. What's wrong with that? I know that we're splitting the labor, but that's not really what I'm talking about at all here. I mean, what about your mom, for instance? You can't really include her with all the chores and taking care of the house, right? But you decided that I'm going to be the one who has to take care of her, and you've never offered me any help. So then you're telling me that you have some problem with taking care of mom then? I thought that you wanted to do it too. You said that you thought if you did it, that the two of you might be able to get along better, right? So I don't get what's the deal you have with her now. Josh, stop. This is not about me having some kind of a problem with your mom. I am not trying to complain about anything particular with your mom. Then what are you trying to tell me, huh? Because I just can't understand the point that you're trying to make with me. I just wonder if you don't think it might be best if we put your mom in a retirement home or something. I mean, even you've said that more than once, right? But then you also scrapped the idea because you said it would cost way too much money for us. 
So I think if you really don't want to go through with that, then maybe you could do just a little bit to help me out with her from time to time? Okay, okay, I see. I think I get what you're trying to tell me. Basically, you're saying that you have no real problems with how things have been handled up until now, and that if anything changes for the worse from now on, then we can find a new plan, right? Oh, also, they started stocking those cookies that you really like at the gas station. Would you want me to buy some before I come home? Josh, I know that you're just trying to change the subject on me right now. Please, I know that it might not be what you want to hear, but I really need you to listen to me about this right now. And I did, and I gave you my answer, and I think that's basically all there is to it now, right? We'll just keep doing things the way that we have been doing because, like you said, you don't have any serious complaints. After all, nothing is more important than keeping our family together, right? We can't just put mom into a retirement home because it might make things easier on you. I know, but I just... I I'm not complaining about your mom. I'm just trying to tell you that it would be really nice if I had just a little bit more help from time to time. And I hear you and I'm listening. But anyways, I'm really looking forward to eating your stir-fry for dinner. Hey there, Opal. I'm really sorry to ask this, but do you know how you told me that you had some plans to go out with friends this weekend? Well, I really need you to cancel those plans for me. You want me to cancel the plans that I've made for this week? Why would I do that? Did something happen? Well, yes, actually. I've been invited out to this shareholders meeting by Frank. It's going to be at a golf club, and I think I would be really stupid not to go. Oh, I see. But Rhea was looking forward so much to finally getting to go out together as a family. Are you really sure that you have to go do this thing? You can't spend any time with us at all? No, I'm afraid not. It starts pretty early and doesn't end until the evening, so I'll basically be there all day. Besides, there are going to be some really important clients there, so it would just make my company and me look really bad if I didn't go. So tell Rhea that I said I'm sorry, but that I had some really important business come up. You know, Josh, it seems to me like you're having more and more work affairs come up over the weekend. I really didn't want to have this conversation right now, but I'm kind of shocked that you're choosing this golf thing over spending time with your own daughter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where is this coming from all of a sudden? You know that I'm only doing this because I have to do it for work, right? Really? Your job is riding on you playing or not playing golf at some resort this weekend? Opal... You don't have a job, so I'm going to try and keep this pretty simple for you so that you can understand. But golf is much more than just a game in the corporate world, you know? It's a way of life. It's a way to socialize, and it's a way to establish foundations for future business. So I don't really appreciate you talking to me as if I'm just blowing my family off for nothing. This is work, I assure. I'm not going to this thing to have fun. And in fact, I'm a little upset that you would even imply that I'd do something like that. Well, I'm sorry, Josh. I really wasn't trying to blame you for anything at all. I'm just trying to point out that Rhea has really been wanting to spend time with you. I mean, you said yourself the other day that you wish the two of you could spend more time together, right? I know, and it really hurts me that I haven't found the chance to be able to do that with her yet. But I don't think any of us want me to end up without a job and not be able to pay for the house, right? So at the end of the day, I have to do what I have to do in order to make money so that I can support all of us. I understand all that, Josh, but I just feel like your work has been keeping you really, really busy and it's causing you to spend less and less time with us. I get that, but that's where you come in, right? You're home all day so that you can be with our daughter even when I can't. That's why you're at home, to take care of all the things that need taken care of there. So I'm sorry, but... You'll just have to tough this one out and deal with it. Because if you don't, then not only will you not follow through with your duties, but I'll end up looking like a fool in my office. Well, when you put it that way, I guess I really don't have any choice in the matter at all, do I? I suppose that this just means Rhea and I will have to find something fun to do that's just us this weekend. Hold up there. What do you mean, you and Rhea? Just what are you going to do about my mom? You weren't seriously thinking of just leaving her at home while you and Rhea go out and have fun, right? 
Why are you asking that question now? Originally, it was just going to be the three of us who were doing something. We were going to call a nursing service to come over and help out with your mom while we were all out, remember? Well, telling you that you can't go and call someone now, got it? So you don't want me to call someone to help with watching your mom for the weekend? Do you mind if I ask why? Because it isn't fair. Why do you two get to go out and have fun while I'm having to do this for work? If I'm working, then you should have to work too. That way we won't have to waste any money on a nurse, right? So you're just making this decision for me then, I guess? And just what do you think I should tell Rhea then? You two can just go to my mom's house together and have fun with the three of you there, right? That still counts as going out, doesn't it? I get that that is still going out, but we do that every single weekend nowadays. If you have something that you need to do, then that's on you, but I don't see why it should stop Rhea and I from doing anything. So you're basically saying that you have no idea making me do all of the work while you go out and have fun? Does that really sound fair to you? Because that just sounds ridiculous to me. And if you think that I'm just going to sit here and take it while you run around doing whatever you want, then you're dead wrong. But that's not what I'm even saying at all, Josh. Then what are you saying? Because the way I see it, you want to get out of taking care of mom while I have to go to this serious work event. Surely you can see why I'd be upset over you telling me something like this, right? Don't you have any sense of responsibility? Okay, okay, fine. I get it. But you have to find some time where you take Rhea out to do something soon, okay? Now I have to go and talk to her about what's going on and why we are going to Grandma's over the weekend. Yeah, sure. I'll look at my schedule and see if there's any time that I'd be able to squeeze her in at all. Anyway, I guess I'll get back to work now. I hope that you're busy keeping the house running too. Hey there, Josh. I I'm really, really sorry to ask this of you right now. But do you think you can come home right away? Wait, what? Do you want me to come home? For what? It's Rhea. I, I think she's really, really sick. I just took her temperature, and it's well over 100 degrees. Oh, really? Oh, well, why don't you just go and take her to the hospital or something? I would, but I'm at your mother's house right now, and I don't want to leave her alone either. So I'm kind of trapped here, but I really need some help. Oh, I see what's going on here. You're ordering me to my mom's house, so then I'll have to take care of her, aren't you? Josh, I want you to come over to your mom's place so that I can take our sick daughter to see a doctor. What are you talking about? I can't do this by myself, and I'm just asking for your help. Well, it's going to be a no for me, dog. You figure it out on your own. Did you even read the messages that I was sending you? I am telling you that I literally can't do this by myself. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds like a bit of a you problem. I don't see why I should have to leave when I'm at work right now. You're the wife, it's your job to take care of that kind of stuff. Now figure it out. Figure it out? Is that really all you have to say to me? Don't you realize that our daughter is suffering with who knows what? Why can't you just come here and help me? I already told you that I'm busy at work and don't have time for any of this. We've already agreed that it's your job to take care of the house stuff, so take care of it. And quit bugging me while I'm at work. I can't believe that you're still talking about splitting up our work at a time like this. Does your system really mean that much to you? Why aren't you able to put your own daughter before anything else? This is really, really important, and I can't believe that you're acting like this. Man, you really are obnoxious. Do you know that? I mean, it sounds like Rhea just has some kind of cold or something. You can probably just feed her some fever tablets from my mom's house and she'll be fine. Josh, this is our infant daughter that we're talking about. I am not going to take chances and feed her pills until she feels better. You worry way too much, you know that? Our daughter is sick? Then be a good mom and take care of her. I mean, you're already with my mom to take care of her too, so you're basically all ready to handle it. I literally don't even know what to say to you right now. This is crazy talk. Look, I'm really busy at work, okay? So you're just not going to come home at all then? I guess that means I'll have to take things into my own hands. You better not do anything stupid. 
Hey, I thought I told you not to leave my mom alone. What are you talking about now? I mean that I heard from my mom that you left her to get Rhea to the doctors. You really put her before my mom? That's right. And what are you going to do about it? Oh, I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do about it when you get back home. I guess it's a good thing that I'm never going back to our house ever again. What on earth are you talking about? Is this your way of trying to get back at me or something? I already know the truth about what you were doing. I heard it all from Frank's wife. What are you talking about now? She happened to text me, and I told her about how you were with her husband playing golf for work. She told me that Frank told her that this was all just for fun and that it had nothing to do with work. Am I wrong about that? Well, it still counts as work if you're bonding with your co-workers. It's good for office morale. And that's why you couldn't come home when I needed help with Rhea? What does Rhea have to do with any of this, huh? You told me I couldn't have any weekend plans because you were going to be at work. This is all your fault. Well, fine then. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to divorce you, that's what. Wait, what? You can't be serious. You wouldn't actually do something like that, would you? I mean, think of all that i do for you. What do you do for me? What do you do for your daughter or even your mom, huh? You leave us all alone while you insist that you have to go golfing. Then when something did happen and I asked for your help, you refused to do anything. I finally had to leave and take Rhea to the doctor, and when you reach out to me and ask what I was doing, you make threats about what you'll do when I get back home. I am sick and tired of being walked on like this. You and I are through. After that, I made some arrangements for a nurse to go over to Josh's mom's house, on Josh's bill, of course, and finalize the divorce papers with the jerk. I made sure the court knew very well why I was the only one suited to have custody over our daughter. Josh was made to pay us child support. Then Josh's mom, realizing what a jerk her son was, told him that she was cutting him out of her life. It might have had something to do with me telling her about how he said it would be a waste of money to hire a live-in nurse or put her in a home. In the end, she did find a lovely retirement home where she went to live. Theo, honey, are you okay? It's getting a bit late and you were supposed to be back a few hours ago. I just want to make sure everything is okay. Theo? What? Why are you bothering me? Well, you've missed dinner and I just wanted to know where you are. I am your wife, so I think I should be able to ask my husband where he is at almost 9 in the evening. If you must know, I'm out with some of my mates from work. Oh, okay. But why couldn't you just tell me that? I've made dinner and it's gone to waste now. Not to mention I've been worried sick about you. Well, I forgot. It's just, a little heads up would have been nice. I said I forgot, okay? Jeez, what else do you want me to say? Ugh, nothing. Whatever. Actually, now that I've got you, I need you to pick me up. What? Yeah, we've had a few too many, so I can't drive back. I need you to come pick me up. I'm sending you the GPS coordinates right now. But it's all the way across town. I've had one glass of wine with my dinner and I'm really tired, so I don't really want to take the car or risk getting a DUI. Oh, come on. You've only had one glass. Besides, if you get caught, it'll only be a couple of points on your license. I'm already near the limit, and if I get caught again, I'll lose my license. So it's okay if I get caught, but not you? Why do you have to be like that? I mean, you've not even had that much. You wouldn't be breaking the law or anything. Look, I'm sorry, Theo, but I'm not coming to get you. You'll just have to get a taxi back or something. That's gonna cause way too much. Come on, just come and pick me up. I mean, what's the point of marrying you if you aren't even gonna help when I need it? Excuse you? I'm just saying that a good wife would come and get me. Don't you want to be a good wife? Don't you want to be a good husband and not blow all of your money on drinks at a crummy little bar? It's my money, not yours. So I can do whatever I want with it. Well, in that case, you can get yourself a taxi home with it, because I'm not going to spend my money putting petrol in my car just so I can come and pick your drunk self up. You're so mean. Just wait until I tell my mom about this tomorrow. At least she knows how to treat me, right? Oh, yes. The woman can do no wrong. Do we really have to go on this trip with your mom and dad? What's the issue with my parents now? 
Be fair. You know your mom is so judgmental of me. I feel like nothing I ever do is right or good enough for her. Well, that's to be expected. My mom wants what's best for me. So of course she's going to be critical of anyone I'm with. I just find it a bit much is all. Can you try and talk to her for me? See if she can just, I don't know, lay off me a bit? I'd be really grateful if you could. Hmm. I suppose I could. Only if you can pick me up from the bar, though. Are you seriously going to blackmail me? Hey, we both want something. You help me and I'll help you. Fine. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Thanks, babe. You promise that you'll talk to your mom for me? Yeah, yeah, I promise. Just hurry up, will ya? I'm getting tired and want to have a good sleep before we go on holiday tomorrow. I'll be there soon. Hello, Faye? Grace, is everything alright? It's quite late. Yes, sorry about that. I just need to confirm a few things before we head up to the cabin tomorrow. Oh, sure. Okay. What did you need to go over? We want to get going by 10 a.m., so I need to make sure Theo is up and dressed and that all of his bags are properly packed. What? Um, sure, I guess. You guess? That's not really good enough, Faye. I need you to be sure that he will be ready. We need to be gone by 10 so that we can get to the cabin by 12. The owners, who are friends of ours if you need reminding, are very busy people, so we can't be late. That means you need to be ready too. Do you think you can handle that? Yes, we will both be ready. Good. Oh, and do try to be a bit more chipper. We don't want a sourpuss ruining the holiday now, do we? No, of course not. Now, Faye, there's no need to be overly sensitive. I meant no offense. I'm just tired. It's almost midnight and I have been at work all day before having to stop your son from drinking himself into oblivion tonight. It tends to make one a bit exhausted. Theo wouldn't act like that. No? Why don't you ask him tomorrow? But for now, I'm going to say goodnight, as I am quite tired and it's going to be an early start tomorrow. Good night, Grace. Good night, Faye. Good morning. Are you two ready to go? Almost, Grace. Just getting the last of our bags into the car. I see. Does that mean you're too busy to say good morning, then? Good morning. How can you still be packing at this time? Didn't I tell you to be ready last night? You should have sorted everything out yesterday so you could just get in the car and go. It's okay. We're all packed now. We're heading over to yours now so we can travel together. Okay, well, hurry up. We don't want to be late. We'll be there in a few minutes. See you soon. Very well. See you soon. Theo, where did you run off to? I got the last of our bags into the cabin. I turned around and you were gone. How could you leave me with your parents on my own like that? Huh? What's so wrong about it? They're my parents, so you'll be fine. Besides, I said I'd visit an old friend of mine who lives up this way. What? This is supposed to be a family vacation. It's the first time I've been on holiday with your parents, and I don't really want to be on my own with them. What do you want me to do about that? Come back to the cabin, please. I need you here to help me. I'm really quite nervous. Look, you're a big girl. You can be by yourself for a little while. I hardly ever get to see my friend. But we're gonna hang out for a little while. You can do whatever you want. But your mom is already judging me and bossing me around. She's treating me like a servant. Not to mention the sleeping arrangements. What's wrong with the sleeping arrangements? What do you mean, what's wrong? We're in completely separate rooms. And? And? And why have I been put in a completely separate room in a building that's practically a little outhouse from the main cabin, while you and your parents are in the cabin? Being married, I thought that we'd, oh, I don't know, share the same room and the same bed. Does this not bother you? Well, I mean, it's not that bad. I guess my mom just decided that we shouldn't share the same bed when they're here. She'd be too uncomfortable knowing her son was sleeping in the same bed as another woman. I'm still her little boy in her eyes. It's kind of sweet, don't you think? No, I don't think it's sweet. I think that she needs to understand that we are married for goodness sake, and married people share beds. Can you please talk to her about it? I think what she's done is really unfair, and I can't say anything because she's not my mother. Yeah, but to be fair, you're not really a part of the main family, are you? What? It's just, the main cabin is where me and my family usually stay. You know, blood relatives? Guests usually stay in the app building where you are. But I'm your wife. That kind of makes me a part of the family. That's the whole point of getting married, to integrate your partner into your families. But you're not really family. Not blood. 
That's what I mean. Okay, I get it. Fine. See, I knew you'd understand. So, you're gonna stay in the outbuilding? Mm-hmm. Great. Well, tell my mom that I'm visiting a friend and that I'll be back soon. Don't wait up for me, though. We tend to end up losing track of time while catching up. LOL. Sure. See you later. Faye! Faye, where are you, and where's the car? Answer me! Hmm? Hello, Theo. Glad to see you finally noticed I was gone. It's only taking you, what, 24 hours? I'm surprised you were able to drag yourself out of bed long enough to notice, to be honest. What are you on about? Where have you gone? My, my mom said that you just picked all your bags up, put them back in the car, and drove off. Why? Well, your mom's not lying. I've gone back home. Well, I say home. Back to the apartment. I'm currently in the process of packing all of my things into boxes so that I can move them all out. Why would you do that? Because I'm leaving you. Why else? What? Yeah. After yesterday, I finally came to realize that you don't love me and you never have. You were just after someone to pick you up after your messes and pay off whatever debts you managed to rack up. And let me tell you, there was a lot. That's not true. I, I want to be with you. Uh-huh. You wanted to be with me so much that you ran off to go and sleep with some other woman as soon as we got to the cabin, right? What? What are you on about? Don't be ridiculous. I'm not stupid, Theo. When I asked your mom what friend lived nearby, she told me that a girl called Laura was close and that you guys have been childhood sweethearts. It doesn't take a genius to put two and two together. Look, that was just a one-time thing. It'll never happen again, I swear. Oh, I don't care what you do. I'm not family, so it doesn't matter to me. In fact, just to make it official, I've left you some divorce papers to sign when you get back, so that it can be legally official that I'm not your family. Hang on, wait a minute, Faye. Aren't you acting a little bit hastily? I don't want to get divorced. Of course you don't, because then you'll lose the person who has been making your life easy for you. I bet you don't even realize everything I do for you, do you? I clean up after you, I cook your meals, I pay all of the bills. You won't last two minutes without me, and you know it. But that's not my problem anymore. Oh, and if you think you can get away with not signing them, it won't work. With your infidelity, a judge would rule in my favor and grant me a divorce anyway. So it'd just be easier for everyone if you sign the papers. I... but what'll I tell my parents? That's not my problem. They're your family, not mine. Fine, but don't try and come begging me to take you back, because I won't. Funny, I was just about to say the same thing. Goodbye, Theo. Thank you for showing me that I was never part of your family to begin with, and that I should never want to be. I moved out of the apartment that Theo and I had shared, and when he got back from his trip with his parents, he signed the divorce papers like I asked. I was able to move on with my life, and I have found somebody new who actually treats me like a queen and a wanted member of his family.